Hello everyone, my name is Corazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. We are back in the world, hot on the heels of our last episode, where we chopped down this redwood tree. What a fun episode. But no, seriously, we put together this distillery, and boy, what a lot of work that was. And I realized I missed a block there. Whoops. But I really love the way this has come out, and I am looking forward to detailing it with you in today's episode as we actually turn it into a real functional distillery. As the sun sets on this fine autumn day, we are going to jump right into it because the stills can take a little while to process our alcohol, although not nearly as long as the barrels did the first time. Now, in between tasks in the last episode, I put together this stack of copper plates, and I think this should be everything we need for three complete stills, which is comprised of a condenser, and a boiler. Not in that order. But we need a whole bunch of these things. There we go. As well as a few other odds and ends, including a tool that we actually haven't made yet. And to make that tool, we are going to need a single copper bar. And I'm pretty sure I have no idea what this looks like. We want to make a soldering iron. Ah, that's why I can't get to it by looking at the copper ingot. You need to make a chisel first. Okay, well, that'll be easy enough. I've made a million of these. Now, I've learned recently that in other countries, people pronounce the ale in solder. But here in America, we do not pronounce no dang L's, because L stands for a loser. So here it is solder, not no solder. Get it? And now, we should be able to just take our fresh chisel, drop it on a stick, and now we have our soldering iron. But now we need something with which to solder, and we have a couple options. Your options must always include some tin, but then you can choose either lead or silver. Now, since we are going to be using these in a distillery where, you know, we have to drink whatever goes through this, I think we're gonna stay away from the lead. We're just going to go with some silver solder, and we'll just grab a couple of these. So we will need seven bars of solder, which is actually a single ingot cut into strips with a saw. I'm not sure how many strips you get from a single bar of solder, so let's make a couple, and if we have any leftovers, then we'll chuck them somewhere. Let's start with five bars. I feel like I've seen a video before where someone used about two bars for a single condenser and boiler setup, and they had a few left over. So let's go ahead and give it a whirl, starting with five. And silver solder is made with a combination of 40 to 50% silver and 50 to 60% tin. And that is what we have here. So we will get five ingots of silver solder out of that. And while we have a calm night and our ingots are cooling, why don't we go ahead and start on the first thing I wanted to do, which is I want to raise this tower up by, I don't know, maybe three blocks should do, as well as add some overhang on the roof. So let's go ahead and get that done. That shouldn't take too long, and by then, our ingots should be cool. Okay, critique. I think it works. I think that looks much better, gives it more definition. And I'm happy with it. Let's go check on that solder. We are cold, all right. Let's go and saw these up and see how many pieces we get. We get five, okay. This is perfect because I think we need 21. Yes, we need seven pieces per complete distillery set, so we need 21. So we can finally go ahead and make our boilers and our condensers. Let's go inside in the safety of our restaurant to do that. In case the wolves are out there watching us, waiting for us to slip. So the boilers are made, one copper plate at the top, 
and then two copper plates stacked in the center and the bottom center slots. And then over on the left hand side you need five pieces of solder and then the soldering iron and bam you get your first boiler. And it uses three durability from the soldering iron so you can make a lot of boilers and condensers with the soldering iron. But we aren't making just one, we are making three of each. So let's go ahead and make our second and third of three when they stack too. Nice. So that was the boiler. The condensers are a little bit simpler. They only take a little bit of silver solder and they take two copper plates each, one at the top and one in the center. And that gets us three condensers. Let's go and install them in our... You know what? Let's not. I hear you. Yes, I hear you. I just realized that we have a wooden floor in here, and I need to light a fire under the boiler. So I think we're going to need to revamp parts of this floor a bit. So here we have the boilers. There, there, and there. And to attach the condensers to them, as I understand, you want to... Nope. Okay, you want to not do what I just did. You want to crouch and right-click on the bottom part of the boiler, right there, like that. And that way you'll see that the tubes connect to the places they need to go, which is kind of vital. So now we have our boilers and condensers set up, and we can go ahead and start using them. But of course, just like before, we're going to need buckets. Okay, so I've made a few buckets, and I am now opening the way, as in opening all the doors between our basement and the distillery. I'm going to use the carry capacity mod to carry the parry. We'll carry the parry. As long as all your doors are open, you won't need to stop and open them because you can't right-click while you're holding a barrel. And you also can't put the barrel... Oh, you can! I have been lied to by myself all this time. We're taking two barrels with us. All right, we have the parry, and now we're carrying the red currant wine, and boy, this is going to take a while. But yes, as long as you open all the doors along your path, you won't need to worry about having to place your barrels and pick them back up again after closing and opening doors. Anyway, I'll meet you over at the distillery after I moved all our barrels. Well, I've grown into an old man while moving these barrels. And I suspect the rest of you have died of old age too. But let's carry on with distilling now. Okay, now that I've closed all the doors again and come back from my visit to the Fountain of Youth, let's start distilling some alcohol. I think we'll start with the red currant wine. Why not? And I'll need a place to put this totally permanent water storage right here. In order to begin the distilling process, you need up to three buckets worth of liquid, namely alcohol. You also need some water in the condenser, which holds up to 10 liters or one bucket's worth of water. This is used to cool the evaporated alcohol back into liquid. I'm also going to drop a bucket under each output, like so. Then we'll fill the boiler with all 30 liters of red currant wine. Next, we build a fire pit under each boiler, so I need to go fetch some firewood and a piece of grass for each one. Unlike when making a fire pit the normal way, don't crouch when right-clicking to place the grass under the boiler. Then add four logs as normal, again without crouching. Then we go ahead and light this up. Note that the burn time for a boiler's fire pit is a bit different than a standard fire pit. Instead of burn time being measured in real-time seconds, it's measured in in-game hours, with each log burning for two in-game hours under the boiler. You also can't interact with the fire pit the way you normally can, and you also can't add more than four logs to it, though after the first use, you can use fewer than four logs. It's basically a single-purpose fire pit that can't be used any other way. Let's go ahead and light it. And now this will burn for eight in-game hours. What'll happen is, it'll first get up to temperature. It won't do anything until it gets to, I want to say, 70 degrees Celsius. And when it does, it'll start boiling off some of the alcohol since alcohol boils at a lower temperature than water. And there we go. We now have 0 0.02 liters of red currant brandy. Time to celebrate. Anyway, each 10 liters of alcohol takes about two hours to boil off, 
So the first run always wastes one extra piece of firewood, no biggie, but you'll also notice that the water in the condenser starts to drop. This is because it's heating up and also boiling off since it's being used to cool all of the alcohol vapor flowing through the pipes. We will need to refresh the water in the condenser at some point, but you can get something like 5 or 7 full boilers worth of alcohol distilled with one bucket of water in the condenser. With that process underway, I'm going to go ahead and start distilling the rest of our low strength alcohol into spirits. And while these are working, it'll give us some time to think about our sins. But more importantly, it'll also give us time to start working on some chiseling. So let's get started on adding some details to our restaurant slash distillery here and get this place ready for its first patrons. Let's get to it. After a snack. So unfortunately, Windows decided to utterly annihilate several hours worth of my voice in some of these recordings. So I'm overdubbing right now, and I've been overdubbing a lot of this video so far, and there's a lot more ahead of me. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to narrate everything going on with the chiseling. So for this, and I think the next one or two chisel sessions, enjoy the silent montage. Sorry about that. Do you hear the crackle of fire? I think we've got a bug. Yep, thought so. Apparently the sounds of the fires will continue to play long after they've burned out. I think I'm going to restart the game to see if it will stop, but in the meantime, let's see how much spirits we now have. Okay, now that's strange. The mead seems to have distilled into half as much volume as the wines did. You'll see here that from wine to brandy, we have a 10 to 1 reduction from input to output volume. We put 30 liters of wine in the boiler, and we now have 3 liters of brandy. Now the mead... Unless I messed up and didn't fill the mead boiler the whole way... No, I did. Apparently the mead just distills differently. That could be a bug too, or it could be part of the design that I was not aware of. Anyway, I'm going to restart the game and hopefully fix the fire sound, and then we'll start putting the rest of our wine, mead, cider, and ale through these boilers and condensers. Okay, the sound seems to be fixed with a restart, but that's probably temporary. Let's go ahead and load this up with more firewood. Now it's important to note that the first time you fire these, you do need four pieces of firewood to create the fire pit. However, to boil off 30 liters of alcohol only takes six hours or three logs worth of fuel. So with each of these, we can just put three logs in, though actually I goofed and we should just have put two logs in each. No big deal. And you'll see that we really didn't use much water from the condenser. It looks like my five to seven runs was pretty close. We don't need to fill these now, and we can just keep using the condensers as they are for the time being. I'm going to light these up, and then while we're waiting for them to finish, we'll get back to some more chiseling.
and with the power of editing, not recording 10 hours of chiseling, and hopefully the last of the overdubbing, our tables are looking nice. With the sound of a rift somewhere in the background, let's get these booths benches in. What I'm going to do is chisel the profile for one as detailed as I can, and then roughen the rest and follow up with any necessary details around the edges. For the corner booth's corner seats, I'll likewise use the copied blocks, mirror half the design at a 90 degree angle, and then smooth it out so it's round. Let's get to work! Alright, here are the mostly finished booths. I think all we need are some table decorations, also some chairs for this guy, which I think will be our next task, but I am happy with how this came out. Check out how inviting yet uncomfortable these look. Ignoring the fact that these cushions are made of stone, this, you know, red naga hide or whatever, it doesn't really have any lumbar support. So it's comfortable enough to enjoy a meal here, but not so comfortable as to encourage customers to sit and chat for three hours. We want them to clear out so we can get their rusty gears and usher in the next set of patrons. And these corner seats were even easier than I thought. I did end up starting with a straight bench, and it took only a couple minutes to mold them into the right shape. I'm really happy with how they came out, and the extended work bencho helped big time. Let's go ahead and work on our first chair for the tables, and then, as usual, we will go ahead and copy them on the Xerox over there. And I kind of want to use the same chairs for outside. It just sort of makes sense, especially since I don't want to make, like, you know just four chairs of one type, I think it would make sense to have matching sets for outside. And I'll probably also copy this table a couple more times and bring them outside too. So I'm going to close the door, ah, warmer now, and get started. So I realized as I was about to copy this that I need vertical planks. And you can't get vertical planks in the game, and that is frustrating. Luckily, there's a mod that I just installed and restarted the game where you can get vertical planks by putting regular planks into your crafting grid and pulling them out, and now they should work just fine. Whoops, I miscounted. You know, I think three tables out here is enough. This extra one was just too much. So since we're already out there, let's go ahead and finish up the pergola, although I no longer hear the sounds of 
expire, so let's go check out our alcohol. Okay, well, after sleeping through a very high activity night, after getting ambushed here, and then sitting through a temporal storm where we got 18 rusty gears, let's finally get back to this. Which I know has been zero time for you, because of, you know, magical editing. Let's go ahead and grab our buckets here, and we're going to bring these downstairs. I believe one of these, red current, need... No, I guess not. Okay. thought we had one of them that already had some black current brandy, but I guess I was wrong. There we go. Cherry brandy, and rye whiskey. Now, what we can do with these is, again, as before... We can drink them, of course, and you'll see, as we look at them, that there's no spoil timer. Once you've distilled alcohol once, it no longer has a spoil timer, but of course, you'll see it has almost no contents, and if you hover over it, while it does provide a little bit of satiation, it provides no nutrition, so it won't increase any of these categories here. And it's also only half of the satiation of what it was in its prior state. So typically, I believe the fruit juice is going to be about 200 satiation per drink. And then you have the wine or the cider or the ale, which is 160. And now we're down to 80. So let's go ahead and give us a sip, huh? And you'll see that after one drink of only half a liter, our world starts spinning a lot more, even more than when we had five drinks of... What was that the cherry cider, I think? So yeah, we are super tipsy, and I apologize to anybody who is having issues right now, but this is... <laughs> actually, I wasn't prepared for this one. I didn't think it'd be this bad. But uh, yeah, we are pretty good and crunk right now. So I will bring you all back when this stops. Should be in about two or three minutes, and then uh, we'll get back to things. Okay, we are back, and we are no longer... Rockin' and swayin'. Let's talk about what else we can do with this alcohol. Because aside from drink it, there isn't much other point, except that you can distill it a second time. And that will get you something called aqua vitae, which isn't a drink. It is basically pure weapons grade ethanol. But there is a use for it, and we're gonna cover that after I grab some of these guys. And once again, there is another 10 to 1 reduction of the alcohol. So we're going to get, I think, what, one and a half liters out of this? Total, one half per boiler. So, yes, this will be a very small amount of aqua vitae. And we will just drop you, you, and you, and light them up. There we go. Now, this shouldn't take any time at all. But, since it is a calm night, after all my drifters are gone, the open, let's go and finish this pergola so we can get this building moving. So, after a couple minutes of work, here is our pergola. And this will provide some protection from the sun, but it won't really protect from the rain. But that's fine. It lets light in, and that's what it's supposed to do. So, I'm pretty sure that the continuing flame sounds over here are a lie, so... Yep, let's check it out. So, we now have... Oh, it's not a 10 to 1 reduction. This is a 2 to 1 reduction. Interesting. Okay, better than I expected by quite a lot. So, let's marry these together in maybe a bucket or a barrel. Here we go. And maybe we can make a little more of this stuff. What do you think? Why not? Now, aqua vitae, as you'll see, or a bolgo, don't have it, so let's grab a bucket. And you'll see it does not provide any nutrition, but it does allow you to drink it, and you get 300 satiation. Now, I am not going to drink it, and yes, I have my mask on now. It's getting too cold outside to work, because I don't want to have to sit here and wait for the room to stop spinning, so we're not going to drink it. However, what we can do with it is we can make bandages out of it. We can take either two wax twine to make two bandages, or we can take a knife to some 
linen and get four bandages. We're not going to. Regardless, what we can do here is if we put the bucket and the bandages together, we get an alcohol soap bandage. However, you'll see that it doesn't last long at all. I think it lasts about, yeah, about 20 in-game minutes. So you have to use them really quickly. There we go. Gone. What will happen is, over time, these will dry out, and they will dry back into regular bandages that don't do anything at all. And there we go. 10% dried already. Very quick. Now, in the bucket, it won't evaporate, to my knowledge. And it looks like it uses, what, about 0.25 or 0.2 liters per bandage. So, not too bad if you need a large supply of bandages. But, honestly, I personally prefer to make the honey sulfur poultices, because although they're kind of pricey, they last forever. And, to be fair, making these is kind of pricey, too, at least time-wise. It takes a long time to get all this distillery stuff going, and your fruit press, and your trees, and all manner of stuff going to make all of this aquavitae. So I'm going to go ahead and just store this down here for now. I don't really have a use for it at the moment. But maybe we'll come back to this if there is a larger purpose for this in a later update. For now, though, let's just get cracking on making this the best restaurant in the world. Never mind that it's the only restaurant in the world. Now, the first thing I want to do is, I think we should address the monkey in the room, is we have this giant distillery barn and these three little dinky stills in it. So it is time that we upgrade our operations to a much larger still. And I'm thinking we still want three of them. I'm going to use this bauxite rock and we'll pretend that it's copper because it's about the same color. And I want to fit three of them in here. And I'm going for pot stills. They are a still design that is still used today. And I think I want to line them up just about like this. That gives some room over here. And you'll need to move maybe to over there. Done. And then we can have the condensers like over here. Like so. So I'm going to go ahead and start on one of these. We'll say this one. Doesn't really matter. And then I'll chisel them in, and once I get one finished, I will move on to the other two via copying. And here we have what I think is a fairly decent representation of a copper pot still. Now I didn't go all the way down to the single pixel detail level here because I do not have the time for that this episode. That might be something for a later detail pass, but there are a bunch of other things I want to get to this episode before we call it quits here, and so I felt that that was best to leave it at this level of detail. Plus we will like never be in here, so. You know. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy these and install the others, and then we'll get going on the last few areas that need some attention in here. Okay, after a night of growling drifters, we have three copper distillers. Look at that, and we have the boilers over here, and the condensers over here, and the tube from the top of the boiler over the condenser, and then we have pipes going into the walls as if we have you know, liquid flowing in and out from some other portion of the building. 
Maybe the basement? Maybe somewhere else? Outside? I don't know. But I did go ahead and add one bit of detail here, which is the door to the stills. And I used slate rock as the sort of rim here, and I even chiseled a little bit of a handle here. And they are kind of bowed outward, because they are supposed to be sort of rounded to strengthen it against the pressures inside the boiler. So there you have it. So the last couple of things I want to do is we need to scatter some clutter around and then we need to hit the basement because down here we need to, well, get rid of this junk, I guess, and then get a real source of water and get this brewing and winemaking room done and then get the kitchen done. That shouldn't be too bad. There we go. A very full winery brewery room. It's very fun to walk through with these ladders here, getting in the way. Okay, now for the kitchen, I think what we'll do is I am going to kick out this wall here a bit. So we'll do what I could do here. Now we'll do it here. here ought to do. And then let's do firewood in this corner. There we go. And then let's just dig a little well here. And I guess not get those stones. But we'll just put the water there. We'll put this bucket there. And we'll put some more buckets over here. I'm thinking there, and maybe there, and maybe there. Yeah, all done. I think this is suitably cluttered. And then we can come out here and finish up the foyer. And we'll do that by tearing these up and putting down some of this polished basalt. And then, a couple of these that I copied. Let's give these a spin around. And then we'll do a mirror. And there we go. Nice, somewhat uncomfortable seating. And there's no elbow room either. There's one more smallish project we want to do on the outside. Though, you know what we could use in here? Some flowers, some plants, some greenery. Let's do that. Very nice. Just a nice little splash of color to offset all of the earth and fire tones in here. Just cools the room down. And then I've been experimenting right here with what I want to do on the outside of the building in regard to these sort of trim bits here. And I think I've settled on this sort of square wave pattern up here and then this slightly beveled 
railing here on the outside. So I did it here too. I've added these to support the timbers there. And then on this side, we're just going to go ahead and we are going to... Oh, we already chiseled these, apparently. Okay. And these guys. So we're going to go ahead and add these planks in and start chiseling these guys out. Like so. There we are. Decided here, I kind of want to actually not do the belt slash rail here. Because, one, I actually kind of like the gradient after all. Going from this dark red to, you know, more of a pinkish brown red. And then up to the bright sandstone rock. And the same is true over on this side of the build. Right here. I have an idea for what to put here. And I'm probably going to regret it later. Because it's going to take a long time to do. And I might like to repeat it over here. And if I do, I will just copy it because... Ugh, no, thank you. So, I'm going to get started on that. And if you have any guesses as to what it is, put them in the comments. And there we have it, folks. Our very own painted on sign this time. As if we had some kind of artist who did a mural on the wall for our Lupine Lodge. That is the name of our restaurant and distillery. I hope you all like it. Let me know what you think of it in the comments. And it is now time to copy this and get it on the other side of the building and wrap up. But we're going to sleep first because it is a high rift night and there are drifters swarming out there. And done. There we go. Lupine Lodge. Complete. We have our restaurant distillery. Do need to go and probably replace you where you belong. There you go. But yes. Oh, and I moved this vessel from here to here, since I removed the workbench, and that is our restaurant done. Got the barrel chairs and the booths and the tables scattered with stuff, and bright flowers everywhere. We got the bar, got the outdoor seating area with the pergola. We have the busing station and the concierge desk the foyer with the uncomfortable seats. We've got the distillery with several giant copper stills, but we only use these for the big batches. For the small microbrewery stuff, we stick to these right here. And then downstairs, we have our brewery. And then we have our kitchen. I say this place is ready for some customers. Well, everyone, that is about all we have time for in this episode of the Vintage Story Guide. 
I hope you enjoyed our completion and detailing of Lupine Lodge today. And boy, was this an ambitious project. I think this is probably one of my longest recording sessions for an episode yet. Anyway, it is winter now, and we have some projects to do around the house. So I think for a little bit, we're going to focus on getting some of the details in that we haven't been really attending to in the past. Things like, oh, I don't know, the third floor, as well as things like our dining room and our book nook. If you have any AMA style questions you'd like me to answer in a video like this one, drop them in a comment with the hashtag 20Questions. And if you play computer games and would like to support the channel, consider using my partner link next time you're shopping on the Humble Store, on screen now and in the description below. Anyway, as always, my name has been Corazar. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.